Hi guys, Squall here, welcome back to another episode of Trucking Diaries. Now, if you remember, we, in the last episode, we took a delivery of flour, yes, flour, down to San Diego. So, ideally what we want to do today is go from San Diego, go via El Centro and try and pick up some of these discoverables. If not, I'd be quite happy to, to take a job down this direction here. In terms of money, we're on $27,000 and we're about level four and a half. Let's have a quick look at our skills here. Uh, so we've got one point in, in high value, uh, high value cargo, one in fragile, one in just in time. Next one I'll probably go for would be long distance, uh, just to give us, just to unlock a bit further jobs, which would give us plenty more money. And after that, I'd probably put one in this, in just in time again, just to get this plus 10% here. Uh, it's worth putting points in this now, but it's pretty much not worth putting more than three in there just because of the size of the world map. So I wouldn't propose to do that. I would try and balance things now between a bit of long distance, uh, unlocking that 10% that reward there uh, with rank two just in time, and then picking up these ADR cargoes. Now, some of these are, are pretty cool. They unlock extra cargo, so we definitely want to do that. Let's have a look at the quick job market and roll the dice and see what kind of job we can get. Uh, so we've got a pizza belt, another pizza belt. Uh, it's almost a pizza belt lineup with a Kenworth at the end. That goes to Barstow, it kind of goes the wrong way. So does that, so does that, and so does that. So absolutely no luck here. Could we go from Prim? No. Barstow, can we get down towards El Centro? It's not looking good. No! Okay, all right. Well, let's pick up something from LA then, going up the coast maybe. Something along this line. Uh, do you know what? I hate that design. That, that that roof there, that spoiler. Ugh. It looks so bad. It's in a Kenworth, some computers up the coastline. I think we should take it just so you can see how bad it looks. <laughs> in fact, you know, I'm really tempted to do that. Let's just see what else we've got. Massive sleeper cabs, completely unnecessary on these short journeys. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that for the lols. So this is a fragile cargo standard delivery. We'll take it. Here we are. We've got half a tank of gas. Look at it. It's very practical. Um, you know, aerodynamic-wise, very, very practical. But, oh my life. Does that look horrible. It looks like some kind of a tool. The actual truck looks like the bottom of a vacuum cleaner, like the head bit. And the trailer's really short. But never mind. It's okay. It's not our truck. There's no way we're having one like this, by the way. I'm telling you that now. Alright, let's get some side lights on. And let's head out of LA. Of course, this thing should have a pretty tight turning circle. With such a short trailer. It's going to be very interesting to park this thing. So, the coastal run in American Truck is... Oh, it's, it's gorgeous. It's, it's really nice. Good old turn right and red. We'll have some of that. Let's keep in this left lane. Some people having a little morning chat over there. Oops, that was a bit early. I guess this... Uh, I guess this trailer is super lightweight. Because I touched the brakes then and the thing just stopped on a dime. There we go. That is the beach, which we're going to go down this lovely coastal road. I must admit, I like taking this uh, this route here. Thing is, what I should probably do, in fact, let's do that now, uh, is bring up the map. And let's be clever about this, because we actually want to discover more roads. We've only done 25%. And there are, although we might make ourselves a bit late, there are some possible... Uh, route options like, oh, they see a Mr. Trick there. I should have gone that way. I've just turned down this road. I could have gone that way and picked up that discovery. Let's see if I can stop doing that. Uh, there's also one potentially here. If we go that way. Mind you, we've not actually done that road, so there's no point. Yeah, we want to turn all the roads yellow. So we'll stick to that main road because we've not actually done... Let's get rid of that. We don't need those two. So we'll go that way, and then we'll go down the main road because we've never done it. 
get to Santa Cruz, and we shall go that way into Santa Cruz just to pick up. So we'll get two more discoveries. Right, can we stop here? Okay. The drivers are probably going to hate me for this, and this is not strictly a legal move. Let's avoid contact with that guy. But... Okay, let's wait to... Let's wait till the lights go on green here. Because I don't want to get a ticket. There we go. We got away with it. Don't do that in the real world, okay? You never saw that. Use car dealer. It'd be interesting to see if it actually rains in this thing. If and when it actually rains. Because it really is the Sunshine Coast, this is. Wouldn't it be cool if you could buy one of these apartments down here? If it was a bit like GTA. And you could just purchase an apartment. How awesome would that be? So you do your jobs, do your journeys, and then at night you come back. Maybe you got a car as well. They could give you a car in this, couldn't they? I mean, just simplistic car. Give you a car, drive back to your apartment. Go to rest. So obviously when you're out in your, in your truck, you would, uh, you would sleep either in your truck or a motel. But when you're finished and you come back to your home base, you, would, uh, you could pull up outside your apartment and go inside there. Maybe you'd also have a little repair shop in, in there. Yeah, that'd be cool. So if you take it to a mechanic, you, you take your truck to a mechanic, and uh, look at this, just look at this, and you get repaired, right? It costs so much money, but if you actually take it home, oh my life, look at this. If you take it back home, you get a discount because you can use like your own tools and stuff. That'd be a nice little feature, wouldn't it? But just being able to have your own apartment with your own truck, which would be brilliant. And maybe they could let you walk around. I'm all every. I just. I'm truly blown away by the detail on this map. It's staggering. It's staggering how many objects there are. Look at that yellow house on the right. Like banana Yazoo color. It's so cool. Skateboarders in the park. The lovely beach. Here's me sat in my truck. I don't even know if it's air-conditioned. Okay, left here. Angle right. So that's a bit more nice road discovered, a bit more coastal road. Hey, that guy's got a trailer just like mine. Okay, broski, what are you doing in that truck there? Okay, I'll go in this lane and we'll all be fine, yep. Cool. Where did that guy go? Alright, he's not there anymore. Well, I'm speeding, I'm speeding. It's still 30 down here. Though that guy just... Where's that road go? Oh, that's not actual road I can drive down. Look, that, those trucks are on a road that we can't go on. And he just went into a tunnel right underneath us here. What a scumbag. Do you know, if there's one thing that's always annoyed me about Euro Truck and American Truck is, is when you go to a road and then you realise it's got those barrier signs on it. And you watch helplessly as the AI just drives straight through it. And you're sat there going, No! I can't go that way! Okay, easy tiger. It was 55, then it dropped back to 30 again. Motel! A lot of flowers out there. There's some little woman sat on the bench outside. Did you see that? She just sat outside the motel on, a, on one of those wooden benches. All on a, on a lonesome... Hey, cruise ship. Isn't that water a bit shallow for a cruise ship? Given the fact we can see the waves breaking here. Sure looks a bit narrow.
I can't understand why it's still 30 down here, but... I better stick to the speed limit because I don't know if there's any cops behind me. Or nearby. There's quite often... A bar... As they call, they call, don't they call them a bar? I remember Smokey and the Bandit. I think they call them bars. There's a bar in the air. That's like a police helicopter. But they quite often sit behind walls and bushes. Entirely the kind of thing that's totally not allowed in the UK. Because it would be considered entrapment, but I've definitely seen it in Eurotruck. I just don't want to get caught out by it because I do not want those fines. I want to bring the money, then we can afford to buy our own truck. If not this... If not after this job, then maybe after the next one, we'll have enough money and we'll be level 5 by then. That'll be cool. Then we'll have some points in long distance, we'll have our own truck, and then we can start bringing in the real jobs. And that's when the real money comes in. Okay. Let's get onto that interstate. Oop, be careful. Okay, unfortunately it's a Kenny, so it's an 18 gear. Which means, oh, you know what? I could just sit here doing 45. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna go to options, controls. I'm gonna change it from my H shifter. I'm just gonna go to uh, real automatic here. Just flick it back and then put it into drive. And that should, there you go. It's immediately dropped into 16th gear. Is that cruise control working? Apparently not. Why is the cruise control not working? Options, keyboard. There should be a button for uh, cruise control that's like the the key, the C key, I think it is. There you go. Oh, I remapped it. Yeah, we'll just put that back to C. Yeah, plus and minus cruise control, the increase and decrease. That's fine. There you go. So, cruise control, if we just bring it up to like just under 55 here. Press the C key. You see how it's locked it in? Cruise control 52. And uh, that works on manual and automatic, funnily enough. However, on automatic, it can obviously change gears for you. So, you know, if it needs to, if you start going up a hill and it's struggling, it'll change it down. Uh, but on manual, it can't do that. It cannot touch the transmission. So, if you're using cruise control on manual, then... Be aware that you'll need to shift it yourself and when you shift it it of course cancels the cruise control so what you want to do is shift gear and then press the resume key and it will carry on again but yeah it sure beats cruising along here in 12th gear the one thing i have noticed about cruise control is it it saves you for saves you from some speeding tickets okay let's hit the brakes because i don't know what's going on here that guy, the truck on the right, he just suddenly slowed down. There's no speed limit change. What's that? No, that's not speed limit. There's no speed limit change, but he's... Everybody's just going 25 miles per hour. So this is weird. Have you noticed that car on the left is floating? The green one. Look at his back wheel. He's ever so slightly off the ground. Okay, broski, I think Mr. Caravan owner, this is mine. Yep, you did the right thing, sir. You definitely did the right thing. <laughs> this is not my truck, but that is your caravan. I'm pretty certain. So I personally, I, I like to drive manual. I prefer the manual shift. Um, but auto's cool. The difference between simple auto and real auto is the simple auto, you just put your foot on the accelerator, it goes forward, put it on the brake, and it'll stop and go backwards. On the real auto, you'll have a like a button map that puts it into forward and puts it into reverse, and you have to sort of manually shove it into that position, just like a, a real auto, in other words. If you sit in a car with an auto, it'll have like a, a D for drive and an N for neutral, an R for reverse. Similar thing, you just need to put it in, in drive or put it in reverse. But otherwise, it's the same, really. Look at the gra look at the pier down there. Look at that. 
I want to go down there. I want to take my truck and drive off the end. <laughs> Into the water. I don't really. Of course, that's the kind of thing you can do in GTA. I'm going to lock in cruise, though. Thing is, even though the speed limit's 55, um, some of the roads I've noticed, like... We can't do it here, but some of the roads, it just feels too quick. You don't want to be doing 55. Oxnard discovered, which is good. That's another city on the unlock list. Did you see that? The speed limit was 55, then it dropped to Oxnard 35, and then it pinged straight back out into 55. It's like the smallest city border ever. I wonder if Oxnard is actually quite a small place in real life. Oop, oh, traffic lights. Let's be careful. Hello, bro. Parking brake on. Santa Cruz straight on, Bakersfield left. Who's behind me? Just checking. There's no cops behind. Of course, listen it on auto. Listen how quick it changes gears, look. And it just went from like 4 to 11. So it just manually shunted up the range on its own. Okay, that is way too quick. <laughs> Lock that cruise in. Oh, what a glorious sunset. Look at this. I use factories on the right here. Look at that. All the pipe works. Just intricate pipe works. There's even, look at that, an electric charging point. Brilliant. Now, if that's not a modern day thing, I don't know what is. Even got a rest area there, look. Just a simple open space rest area. Never see that in Euro Truck in years gone by. There were always like predefined fuel stations. The thing is, like in fuel in Euro Truck, the fuel stations were always on the on the motorways, which is equivalent to the interstates, and uh, they were never in the cities. Whereas these days, they're everywhere. They're all in the cities. They're on the interstates. But the rest areas as well, in particular, um, they're just so different in style. Like they used to be only available at specific places um, and there would always be a similar style that you, know, you pull up in a in a car park almost predefined white lines on the floor but that is just you know piece of piece of flat land which is really cool it's a lot more realistic and that is a nice sunset look at that this coastal road is beautiful Scene of many a movie, I seem to remember. There's plenty of movies where they've been driving down this road. As it twists and turns. And if you think about it, like what, that's the Pacific on the left, isn't it? Pacific Ocean. If you go out, if you start heading out that way, it's it's thousands of miles until you get to any more landmass. It's just Insane. Apart from pocketed islands, it's just insanely far to anything if you head out that way. What time is this job due in? 6 p.m. till midnight, and it's 8.44 p.m. Okay. How far have we got left? 10 miles. All right, looks like we'll get there before it goes completely dark. Uh, my guy is due for rest in 7 hours 43 minutes, which means another job before we rest, probably. And then depending on the size of the job... Depending on the size of the job, uh, he may have to rest on the job or rest after the job. So we're in Santa Cruz, but if you remember, we rerouted the sat-nav. I can see it turning right, though. We should be going left, but we're going right to get that discoverable. Once we get our own truck, this won't be a problem, because we can just drop the delivery off and then, you know, have a quick drive around the city and pick up anything that we need to. But for now, 
this works fine. You know, I'm really beginning to love this turn right on red thing. I'm actually thinking that they should bring this into the UK now. Obviously, be a turn left on red, but it just makes sense, you know? Just makes sense. Keeps the traffic flowing better. The other thing they tend to do a lot in um, in the EU, which they don't really do in the UK, I don't know if they do it in the US or not, but at night time, where the, the junctions that have traffic lights are normally busy, uh, sorry, they're normally busy in the day, but then they're not busy at night, like this, for example. You see how there's nothing coming from over there? So if this was a typical example of a junction that is just not busy at night, uh, in Europe, what they'll do is they'll flash all the traffic lights onto amber. Now, I don't think they have amber in this country, do they? I think you only have red and green. Um, yeah, you only have red green, so you can't really do that. But what they would do is they will flash it on amber, which is in between the red and the green. And that means it's a... It, effectively, the junction stops being a traffic light system and becomes a give way or yield type system. So what you then do is you approach the junction and you look and, and you sort of give way, you know, you, there are, the, the traffic density is so low that often there'll be nothing there anyway, but even if there is traffic there, you just work it out, you know, if he's already in the junction, you yield and, and so on. Uh, which is, oh, again, it just keeps traffic flowing, it stops people from stopping at traffic lights at night when there's just nothing going on. Of course, in the UK, we have a slightly different answer to that, is what we tend to do is put sensors on the traffic lights so they detect when traffic's coming and switch the lights accordingly. But that's more expensive because... Uh, oh, we're not going that way. It's more expensive because they have to go around fitting sensors and then the advanced software to deal with it. But yeah, this is just, you know... You have to stop and then you can go. It's cool. I like it. We are nearly here. Let's get in that lane. We're nearly here. Another job. Another bit of pay. No damage. No speeding tickets. No fines. Nothing. A lovely clean run. That's how I like it. That's how I'd like to keep things going if possible. Of course, this is American truck and the AI is the same as Euro truck, so which means it's not going to happen all the time. If I get a speeding ticket, though... It will uh, probably be my fault. If I get a crash, it will probably be the AI. Walmart. See little details there. Look on the right there. That, that gate has got graffiti all over it. Just lots of little details. Okay, Jeff, where do you want it, sir? Uh, he wants it down in that corner. Now, I don't know the orientation of the parking. That's the thing. I think you can... I'm not sure if you can drive around the other side or not, to be honest. I bet you have to U-turn this thing. Oh, no, I don't. That's fine. It's actually quite a straightforward one. No, you can't drive around the other side. There are some delivery places where you can go all the way around, but in this one you can't, by the look of it. Okay, let's whack it into reverse. We don't need to bring that side mirror up there because there's just nothing. There's no obstacles on that side. And since it's a near side reverse, we can just focus on looking out the window and doing it this way. Typical example of a distribution center setter. Oh, yeah, straight in. Look at that. Brake on, detach, let's get paid. 200 miles, all the bonuses, nothing taken away. $2,500, 252 XP. Mm, that looks like we're not going to make level 5 on the next job, unfortunately. Um, so we are on $30,000, which is awesome. Um, have we got any more emails? No. The bank's willing to loan us up to 500 grand, which is just crazy. I don't want to borrow 500 grand. I want to get a long distance point. Yeah, I think definitely level 5. Okay, guys. Definitely level 5. We've got one or two more jobs to do. Then I'm going to get a, a loan. Uh, we're going to buy our own truck. We'll have a long distance skill point. 
and off we go. So as soon as we hit level 5, I'm going to buy a truck. That's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy. Until next time, happy trucking.